Hello again SGBers, I'm Companion Wolf with another Smile Game Builder tutorial video. This video gives two methods of teleportation. One is by pressing a key where you teleport from one location to another and the other one is the creation and use of waypoints. I'd like to thank everyone who has liked, subscribed and commented. It's greatly appreciated. In fact, I recently hit 300 subscribers, which is awesome. It may not seem a lot, but compared to where the channel was a year ago, it's certainly a step forward, and it's because of you and your support. If this is the first video you've watched in my SGB tutorials and showcases series, or if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to be notified of when I upload new videos. This was originally going to be the follow-up to the previous tutorial on HUDs adding a fatigue, thirst, hunger system. However, there was a bug in my copy of SGB where importing images needed for the HUD resulted in an error. This has since been fixed, but because of my weird shift at work, I intended on recording the tutorial so that it was ready to upload on schedule. As a result, the continuation of the HUD will be deferred until a later tutorial, most likely this week's. And the weirdest thing happened. Last week's tutorial disappeared. I searched and can't find it anywhere. Everything was all ready to go and when it came to recording I just couldn't find the prepared project so I started it again for today, Tuesday instead. This Sunday's tutorial will have to be one of those pre-recorded ones because of the weird work schedule I mentioned. I saw on the Steam forum a while ago where Anonymous asked if it was possible to teleport the player when a certain key was pressed, in this case X, to teleport to another map, and then press the key again to teleport back to the original XY coordinates on the previous map. This is just like the spell Lloyd's Beacon in the Might and Magic series, so can it be done? The short answer is no, at least not exactly that way. You can partially do it though as a kind of workaround by compromising. The first thing to do is to create an auto running synchronized event assigning a variable in this case key to teleport um, <clears throat> to the key input Unfortunately, it's not possible at this stage to assign keys other than the directional ones decide, cancel and dash. And this is where the compromise comes in. The only logical choice really is dash. It just means that the players won't be able to run because as soon as the dash key is pressed, it'll teleport the player to the specified map. The variable box check is whether the key to teleport value is 2, i.e. the number for when the dash key is actually pressed. And if it is, then move to another location. In this case, the house is activated. You'll then have to copy and paste this teleport event on each of the maps you want the teleportation to work on, changing the destination, obviously, to move to the location event command um, to the map you came from. And as I mentioned previously, there is no way to teleport to specific XY coordinates because SGB has no function to remember those coordinates and no feature to teleport the player's XY coordinates specifically through values. So let's play test this method. So the player can move freely around. And then when you press the dash key, instead of running, it'll teleport. Of course, you could add like a special effect and sound so that you teleport. And you press the dash key again, it'll go back. You will need to specify the location to 
teleport to, usually at the beginning of the map. Now, if you're not willing to sacrifice the dash key, there is another way of using a teleportation system in the form of waypoints. These are common in the Elder Scrolls Online. I don't know of other games that use a waypoint system, or at least I can't remember any, but if you know of others, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested in that information. What I'm going to do first is just make sure that the um, synchronize is off and that applies to both areas. Uh, so it doesn't sort of accidentally activate. Now for the waypoints we're going to use another variable for creating a map ID to reference the waypoints themselves. A waypoint in this scenario, inspiration for which is drawn from Elder Scrolls in particular, is where you can set the map you want to teleport to. So in a new event, choose an appropriate graphic. I chose the um, light spot one. It just seemed more appropriate. And then in the event details, um, which display a message set waypoint here and then display a selection with the options yes and no leave no blank as it won't be used in this tutorial although you could probably use it for other things like healing and saving um, we'll come to that a bit later and yes you do want to teleport in this case we would set the map ID to zero because this is the first map I have numbered the maps accordingly for easy reference so this one would be map zero the house would be one and the desert would be two now make make a note of the XY coordinates of the waypoints on each map because we'll need these shortly to teleport, you could either create an official teleporter, as I have here, or use the waypoint itself using exactly the same methods that I'm about to show you. So for the teleporter, new event on the map next to the waypoint, or somewhere else entirely, of course, and then you display a message. Do you want to display do you want to teleport to your saved waypoint? Um, again, another display selection with two options and under no perhaps you could have a nice cliched message have a nice day then under yes just turn the local switch on now uh, at this point um, I've, I'm going to show you various methods that you could do this but for now, this is the simplest and probably the easiest to follow where you turn on the local switch and we're going to use the map ID to check which waypoint to teleport to. You can place the next part directly under here if you want to keep everything on a single sheet. But for this purpose, the local switch will do. On sheet 2, triggered if the conditional local switch is on and it's triggered one time only in the event details. Now each of these branches checks the map ID variable and moves the player to the corresponding maps waypoint. This is where the notes for the XY coordinates become useful because change map will not actually show any of the events that you'd created. It'll only show basically terrain and objects so it makes it a little bit more difficult and then the only thing you'd need to do is to change the Y coordinate to match one coordinate greater than the notes you made to teleport directly in front of the waypoint 
Now for this map's XY coordinates, we can see at the bottom it would be 9, 8, so the teleport destination would be 9, 9. And for the house, it is at 15, 12, so we'd need to set it 15, 13. And likewise, the desert. I've set it to 1619, so its destination is 1620. Anyway, you can continue this way for as many maps as you have waypoints. Um, adding a map, <coughs> adding the map ID checker and its destination accordingly. And then at the very, very end, we turn the local switch off to reactivate this the next time you visit the map. Um, so you can teleport elsewhere. It'll basically go back to the beginning. If you set it some, set the waypoint somewhere else, like in a desert, you can come back to this map and then set the waypoint back to zero again. As I mentioned, you can also put this entire map ID branch and place it on sheet one under the yes, in which case you won't need a second sheet or the local switch at all. I've actually done this in the house. So the teleporter in the house has a completely different setup. Um, with options to save, heal, and teleport. And then under save, you would display the save screen under heal, full heal party, or partial, depending on what you want. And then under teleport, this is where the map ID branch structure comes into play. And then that would be it for that one. Now on the desert, The teleporter has just the same. So to recap, each map you want a waypoint on will have a waypoint set to the map ID. And each of the maps will also have a teleporter to check where you go. Another thing you can do, as I have done, I've pre-created this just for convenience, is on the teleporter, this is the desert teleporter by the way, um, under the no, instead of just leaving it blank or something, you could display a message to teleport to another map, and then you have another display selection with yes and no as the options, under yes, another display message with choose a destination and then the options would be the various maps that you can teleport to so in this case it would go right to the start uh, so you could teleport here say just outside the house and then when the house is selected you can teleport to the entrance of the house and it's the same way with the desert you would actually teleport it to somewhere at the start like that and then under the no option that's when you have your cliche And then sheet two is the same as before.
then on the start map the teleporter will have exactly the same options as the one for the desert. Now if we play test this it should work as it's supposed to. back to the desert and set the waypoint here no but we're going to go back to the start and this time in the house and it'll teleport back to the desert Likewise, go to the house, set the waypoint, and that's it. And that's how you create a very simple waypoint system which can easily be adapted and advanced for something a little bit more complex and dynamic to suit your game. Now in last week's tutorial, well actually it's two weeks ago now, um, in tutorial 44 anyway, I noticed a bug where after accepting the quest again to collect the herbs, you couldn't collect the herbs. And as promised, this is the fix for it. You can actually put uh, check event switch on sheet 2 turning the local switch back off and using the switch herb quest finished on means yes the quest is finished and off no the quest isn't finished so if when is off under its yes branch that's when you would turn the local switch off for those who haven't seen tutorial 44 I'd recommend that you view that one first because this is actually completely relevant to that one and it's just basically a fix that I wanted to put in so that it'll work as it should after accepting the quest for the herbs a second and subsequent time and this concludes this tutorial if you found this video useful give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already click on the bell icon as well so you can be notified of my future videos including the live streams I do starting next year as I mentioned in the previous video um, I will be doing another monthly digest for this month the reason is that everything will become consistent for subsequent months so that everything can then fall into a, the pattern of the last Sunday Monday of the month or the last day of the month continuing with the monthly digest you can also watch the other tutorials in this playlist if you like and for news and updates including unique content I don't post anywhere else you can visit me on Twitter and Facebook or the Smile Game Builder website and that's it for another video in the Smile Game Builder tutorials and showcase series thanks for watching until the next time